Hello fellow hunters. My objective in this video is one simple task. Is elemental damage good for gunlets? This is not a simple question at all because elemental and raw operate under different rules. At a blind eye, raw is highly favored. The hit zones in the monsters are better reaching up to 65% hit zones normally while elemental is capped to 30% at most. Raw can critical without the cost of a skill. White Sharpness Raw Multiplier is 1.32 while the elemental damage is 1.15. But Raw for Gunlands has a huge disadvantage, the poke damage motion value sucks. Pokes in Gunlands have a movement value of 24, this basically means that all your nice Raw is reduced to less than a quarter. One point of Raw will be multiplied by 1.32 and then by a maximum of 1.4 but then for pokes this is only a 0.443 multiplier in a 100% hit zone with 100% affinity and critical boost 3. Being realistic, you will only have up to 70% critical using a Rampage GL. 40 multiplied by 0.7 a 1.28 damage instead of a 1.4 and add to that the best common hit zone of 65%. So, in the end, our expectancy of damage per point of raw is only 0.263. You need at least 4 points of raw to raise a single point of damage. On the other hand, with elemental damage we get a cap of 0.30 as the best common elemental hit zone. This gives us 1.15 from sharpness multiplied by the 0.3 hit zone for 0.345. This means we will increase the poke damage by 1 for each 3 points of element. A 30% elemental hit zone is equivalent to a 85% raw hit zone. Of course, a 30% elemental hit zone is as rare as a unicorn that shoots thunderbolts. Apex Mitsu Claw, Rathalos Head, Diablos Belly are one of the few examples of a 30% and most of the time these are hard to hit. In general, you will only get access to hit zones of 20 or 15. At these the effective elemental modifier falls to 0.23 that is not bad and 0.1725 that is not good. A 20% elemental hit zone is equivalent to between a 60% and a 55% raw hit zone meanwhile a 15% is worse than a 45% hit zone. That is the point where I draw the line of don't bother with critical and use a poison of mind I build instead. That is about pokes. Slam and Sweep have instead modifiers of 0.48 and 0.68 that makes every point of raw do double and almost triple the raw values. The calculated raw modifier of 0.263 becomes 0.52 and 0.73 that are much much higher than the 0.345 elemental modifier. I have saw some people trying to add fire attack to Eric Nalance but is a big waste of resources. Eric Na only has 27 base fire. With fire attack 5 you can get 37 points of fire. 10 extra points as noted will be between 3 and 4 points of damage in a 30% fire hit zone when your sweeps are doing well over 150 damage. Never go for elemental in a normal gunland setup. For wide elemental is way better but we have the problem that the only one elemental gunlands with wide 5 is Almudrin's gunlands. Almudrin also comes with elemental exploit that is an additional 15% to elemental damage when you hit elemental hit zones of 25% or more. Is basically the best elemental gunlance in the game. But has the very big problem that the element is water and there is a big lack of monsters with 25% water hit zones. Basically the count is Teostra, Valstrax, Diablos and stop counting. Almudrin is also impaired with blue sharpness and only 170 natural raw. In version 2.0 when comparing wide gunlances, Almudrin was indeed the strongest wide versus water over 25% by about 4 damage per pokes. In version 3.0 we got introduced to worth using rampage gunlances. Here in the second ramp up slot we can decide if we want plus 10 raw or minus 10 raw in exchange of 30 points of elemental damage. Or status. This is 20 raw versus 30 elemental damage. And with the previous calculations we got our answer already. 30 points of elements in a 15% hit zone is 5 extra damage per poke that is exactly the same as you getting 20 points of raw in a 65% hit zone. This means that as long as you are fighting a monster with 15% or better elemental hit zones, having a wide rampage weapon with element will be better than a pure raw one. The biggest practical example of this is Valstrax that has 25% hit zones in the head, neck, 
four legs and wings while still having a 20% in the torso and chest. The Valstrax melee hit zones are also bad with only 55% in the head and under 45 everywhere so your weakness exploit will not activate there. These elemental zones and awful melee ones makes even using elements with wide and long considerable. Valstrax is also strong against poison. So we got at least one great example to use in elemental gunlets. In general every monster always has a 15% hit zone against anything. Of course, we are scratching damage here and it is your task to decide if you have the time or will to craft elemental rampage weapons. This can be worth it if you are focused on farming one monster or you are speedrunning. For the common player who doesn't want a complicated life I recommend using poison that is as strong in most situations and works against almost the whole cast. And I only hope they will introduce new elemental weapons in the following updates. Now, I need to think about good elemental builds since it is clear that elemental damage is good for gunlands. But before that, my next video will be about the anti-gunlands style. The gunlands without the gun. The slap lance. You know that I'm going out of ideas for videos when I resort to this thing. Ahem. That is all for today. See you in the hunt.